messenger and the seed of all the prophets. O Muslims, you must know that this speech is the speech of Almighty Allah, Al Quran. The best guidance is the course of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The worst of all affairs is innovation and fabrication and addition to the religion of Islam. Verily, every innovation and every addition to Islam will lead to the fire. I assure you, as well as myself. To fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of your ability. Fear Allah and don't die unless you are Muslims. It is my pleasure to be with you again today to discuss a very important topic. Marriage in Islam. And to be more specific, about keys for a successful marriage. And before we get to the subject, we have to understand the importance of this subject. That because out of the family, out of these two couples, the husband and wife, when they get together, they lay down the first foundation for a Muslim woman. If we can succeed to have the first brick and the first stone, we lay down correctly, the clean you'll be able to erect your wall and establish your building. There's no way that we can have a strong Muslim community or a united, successful Muslim woman if we do not have a successful marriage. If we consider about the Khilafah and Islamic government, we have to be the same concern. We have to give the same concern to marriage in Islam. Because this woman and this Khilafah established on the marriage. And the marriage, if it's not solid, if it's not successful, you could not get a successful woman or a successful Khilafah. So this subject is very important, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam. And it is the job of every one of us, male and female, to work hard towards this. And before I get into the subject, I just remember this verse in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَصْلَحْنَا لَهُ زَوْجَةً That we made his wife, righteous or good wife for him. The Salah, the righteousness, the happiness, the misfortune, you know that everything is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a mu'ti. قُلِ اللَّهُ مَمَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِي الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُزِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ Say, O Allah, the owner and the sustainer of the whole kingdom, Malik al you give the kingdom to whom you wish. You give the power and the authority to whom you wish. And you take the power and the authority from who you wish. And you honor whom you ever want, and you dishonor whom so ever you want. In your hand, all the good. Verily, you have the power to do all things. So number one, we have to understand that the habits 
and the successful marriage is coming from Allah. So we need to submit our own self to Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make our action good for us. He will make our affair good for us. He will make our marriage successful for us. Worship in Allah. To submit yourself willingly to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That both husband and wife, they need to surrender themselves with all their needs and their abilities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn the heart of the husband or will turn the heart of the wife to be obedient, to be a good wife, to be a good husband to you. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us that the hearts of the human being between two fingers of Almighty Allah, he turns it whatever he, way he wants. So it is not by providing material things that you will have a successful marriage. But it is by submitting yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and calling in Allah, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّا لَتَبِينُكُمْ إِلَّا عَلَى الْفَاشِعِينَ That seek help through prayer and sabr and patience. Verily Allah with those who show patience. So, that we have to struggle to be a good Muslim, and this number one, for a successful marriage, for a successful life, for anything. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لا في خصر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر By the token of the time Verily all mankind are in a state of what? Loss All of them Doesn't matter what their occupancy, their occupation, their degree Allah said, all mankind are in a state of loss. They are losers. Save those who believe in Allah. إِلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that all mankind are losers. So if you don't want to be a loser, if you be a winner, you be among those who have the happiness, the good of this life, as well as the good of the hill after, you have to have this for one. Iman, amal sign, Tawasid al-Haq, Tawasid al-Sab. So this number one, we need to establish Islam in ourselves. We need to establish Islam in ourselves, and this is not directed to the wife only. This is directed to the husband as well as the wife. It's directed to the husband as well as the wife as well as the children. So this is number one. This verse just to strike my mind when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about this prophet وَأَصْلَحْنَا لَهُ زَوْجَةً وَأَصْلَحْنَا لَهُ زَوْجَةً Look to Pharaoh as a zombie. Pharaoh was a character. But his wife, she was a believer. Okay? Look to Luke, the prophet Luke. He was a, a prophet, a believer. But look to his wife. So, the one who turns hearts is Allah. So you have a problem in your marriage, turn to Allah. Turn yourself to Allah. Turn yourself and your direction, direction to Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will do things better for you. He will improve the condition. Okay? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Taqullah wa qulu qawlan sadeedah yuslih lakum a'ma lakum wa yarqi lakum zunubakum. Fear Allah. This is the key point. Fear Allah. And say a word straight to the point. He will make your action, your affair, what you manage is part of it. He will make your affair good for you and will forgive your sins for you. Without taking too much in the introduction, although this is a whole lecture, but let's talk about some general about the key to successful marriage. Really, my dear respected brothers and sisters, in my personal estimation and experience, 
I will say that one of the main things comes the moment of attending to get married, the time of khutbah. This is very important. This is very important and crucial for you because sometimes we get so excited about getting married. The person just took shahada or he just got out of a bad experience. So right away he's thinking about getting married. The same thing about like the brother or the sister. So sometimes as the first one comes to your face, this is what you want to get married. Rushing ourselves into something that we don't know what is the end and what is the details of it. So this is something very important that I would like to talk about, about the khidr. Why did the Prophet sallallahu have advice one of the companions when he told him that he did get married, why he told him, he asked him, did he look at her? He said, no. He said, go and look at her. Because this will help to improve and stabilize the condition of the marriage between you and her in the future. Don't jump into anything you don't know what the details of it. It is your right to see the sister. It is her right to see you. It is your right to know about her. It is her right to know about you. But I'm not talking about privacy. Don't misquote me and don't misunderstand me. I say this is your right to look at her. It is her not right to know about you. It is her right to see you. You need to know about this sister who is going to be your partner. And it is her right to know about this brother, who is he, what he's about. The Prophet ﷺ has told us that to look at him, but we understand also the Prophet ﷺ inform us that مَقْتَرَ رَجُلْ بِمْرَأَةَ إِلَّا وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانَ تَالِفْهُمَا That any time a woman and a man be in privacy, that the shaitan will be the third of the two. Okay? So I'm not saying, some people they say, what about if we go take a walk in the in a public park, as example, okay? Central Park or whatever, or walk downtown. This is a public place. I will say to him, no. Say how come? Because the the value of Islam, the principles of Islam is different from the Kafir principles and the values of the Kafir. Very, for a simple reason. In a public place, in a restaurant, in a train station, in the central park, you can find two people hugging and kissing. It's not a big deal. People walking, coming back and forth. It means we do more than this. So it's not a big deal for the capital society for two people doing this. What's going to prevent you? Not I'm saying that you're a bad or a sinful Muslim, but we all of us are human beings. We have our weakness. We have our problems. Why you have to take yourself to a position that you may fall in a hole like this? So, if you can be with her in a place like this called, you call it a public place, I say it's no public according to Islam. What is going to stop you that you kiss her or you hold her, hold hands and walk together? Because there's no brother there, there's no sister there, you are not going to feel embarrassed. You see? But I say that the person has the right to see the sister. He may go visit her in her house, in the presence, uh, presence of her, presence, uh, the presence of her father, her family, her brother, uh, her uncle. Uh, if not, maybe he go with the imam, or she can come to the masjid in the presence of the imam. They can have a discussion. <coughs> the Prophet sallallahu alaihi said, your day. Look for the woman who have religion." Otherwise, tell you that that is an expression that means that your hand would be touched to the dust or close to the dust. That means like you'll be in a miserable condition. Okay? So it is very important. And when we say that it is 
not because a sister put a khimar, now she has a deen. It is part of the deen. We have to be concerned about the system, how long she's been Muslim. Ask about her activity is a community. A sister just took shahada yesterday and she put a khimar. Now I say, Akhi, she is a religious sister. Or a brother just took shahada yesterday, he put a kufi. Now he's a good Muslim brother, or he has a beard. This does not indicate that he is the right person. You have to check on the person. See how many times he goes to the every week. See what kind of activity, what kind of contribution he do to the mass or to the community. You need to check why we check about everything else that we buy or rent in a house or buy anything. We check all this information. But about something, maybe it will stay with you forever until you will die or she dies, and we don't want to make any check on it. Does this make sense? You check on the car and how many owners of this car and all the things. And this house, how many years old? And, but getting married, jumping into it because the brother wants to get it, get married, the sister wants to get married, we don't think about it. And later on, a week later, a month later, problems, hardship, divorce, cholera, all kind of things. And after this, the sister go from a brother to a brother, and the brother go to another sister, and a child from this marriage, and a child from this marriage. Let's slow down. Let us slow down, take our time, and not because I'm so excited, I want to get married, jump in. The first sister, when I open the door, she's walking, she has her I want to get married. No, we have to think. Think about yourself. You know something about yourself. Think about what is your your hobby as a dumb. Think about what kind of uh, background that you have. Think about your education. Why don't you try to think about something who may be similar to your background that you can have some kind of understanding and you can have the same level of intellectual as if you can talk and relate to each other. Can you imagine if you, as example, you love hunting and there is a sister who loves to hunt? I'm giving you an example. Don't quote me in each word, I'm only giving you an example. I appreciate a brother he brought to my attention. He said, I don't know if he said it or I misquote you. He said, did he say that a husband and wife can play cards together? So the lecture was about three years or uh, three years ago, and you know, after he passed 40 years old, they start to forget things, okay? Not everybody, but at least for some people like me. I start to forget, so I really don't remember. So uh, this was a lecture of marriage in Islam. So I said, Aki, if I say this, don't take it for granted, but the point I'm trying to give you example is that you have to have some kind of relaxation between you and your wife. Maybe the car is the, the least evil game that they can think about that the husband and wife can play together. You can play some kind of, if you know, some kind of a game that you can play that, that means to have some kind of relaxation between you and her, that sometimes it is that you like friends, not only husband and wife, order and command and a leader. And, you understand? So when I say hunting, I'm giving example. But you have to see what, what you about. Somebody maybe as example like fishing. There's nothing wrong, you understand, that there is a wife, she will like fishing. To which will teach you supper. You will sit there for a half an hour, okay, with your fish rod, waiting for something to come, although sometimes I feel it's wasting time. But this is a mean, means of relaxation for some people. Alright? Therefore, you may take your tape recorder and take you understand one of these on your tapes. And you can be sitting listening to a lecture while they have your fish run in the water. So can you imagine if you have a sister who has the same hobby? Or she has the same kind of education. You study economic and she study economic. Maybe now you can produce a better or both of you study computer. You see, it will be some kind of uh, what you call uh, some kind of way of communication. Side religion of the Allah said that Muhammad said, will be way of talking with each other about other things instead of coming now open Sahih al Bukhari, read few hadith, finish, time to go to sleep. Okay? So 
This is one of the things that are advised that even when they get married, before jumping into marriage, they start to think about themselves. Make some kind of resume. It does not have to be a regular resume. Try to think about yourself, your background, and this applies to the brother and the sister. And now you can figure what kind of a brother that you're thinking about or what kind of a sister that you thinking about it, because this will bring about more closeness between yourselves. One of the problems that cause dissension is a marriage, and I feel that if we avoid it can be one of the means and the keys for successful marriage, to be honest and truthful about yourself. Sometimes the brother or the sister, they may be high or all bad some information. Did you ever been married before? No. Later on, after a couple of years, they traveling or a brother, the mailbox, the sister been hunting this brother for a few years. Finally, she got to know that he's Philly and she found his address and she sent him a letter. And he was in his way, his wife went to the mailbox and she sees this letter. She, the female name, opened the letter and after this she got to know the whole story. Oh. See, right away you start trouble. You already start trouble. You see, brothers, this comes out of what? We don't trust Allah. <coughs> we don't really have the right belief in Allah. Because the right belief in Allah that you believe that whatever for you is for you, whatever is not for you is not for you. Be truthful and be honest about the information you give. And if the sister is for you, Allah decreed that she's going to be for you, she's going to be for you. And if you being honest and truthful with her, she don't want you, it's fine. Still, this is better than get married and after one year or two years she found that you lied to her or she lied to you and after this will be separation. And after this special, if there is kids involved in this marriage. So, exchanging information. If it's necessary or being asked, the brother as well as the sister, they should be honest and reveal this information to their partners. Did you been married before? Did you been in jail before? Uh, did you use drugs before? Whatever she's going to ask you or whatever you're going to ask him. Hey, it is very poor, yes, I used to do this, but Alhamdulillah, I became Muslim, and now for the last, you understand, few years, Alhamdulillah, I never smoke marijuana, I never shoot all the things, nothing, okay? I'm a clean person now, and I went to some kind of uh, hospital or consultation, and alhamdulillah, I've been, my system been clean for the last three years. Good. You see, don't try to have, because you never know. Something will happen to you. They will call your, medic, uh, your, your uh, uh, medical record, and after this, you lay down in the bed, you don't know what's going on, and she's going through your medical record and she get to know that you were before in the hospital before because drugs and 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 or oh, he lied to me you see so when we get into the marriage we should be honest and we should trust in Allah before anybody else that we know that anything established on cheating is not going to stay forever is not going to be successful and the Prophet said man Whosoever deceived one of us is not part of us. Okay? So we have to be honest and any information being asked from your partner, you should reveal it and you can after this show your excuse why you did or what is what or what is the story. <coughs> Other information related about your job, your health, about prison, about drugs, anything about being married, do you have kids, all these things. If it asks, you should reveal this information for your partner to avoid any problem in the future. One of the successful means that will contribute to success, one of the means that will contribute to successful marriage, awareness of both partners. The awareness of both partners before marriage. We want to get married. But, do you know what marriage, marriage is about? The brother wants to get married. But do you know what this means to be a husband? Do you know what this means to be a father? 
The sister wants to get married. Good. But do you know what it means to be a wife? Do you know what it means to be a mother? Are you ready to handle this responsibility? Or only because we have some ex excitement in our bodies or some emotion, some feelings, we want to get married, so go get married. It is very important for you to seek knowledge. Same way like to make salah, same way to make hajj. You have to know how to make hajj and you know how to make salah and wudu. You learn the things. You study about it. You ask the scholars and learning people. The same thing marriage, brothers. The same thing marriage. Have obligations, responsibilities and rights. The Prophet says, each one of you is right. You're going to be a governor, you're going to be a husband, you're going to be a father. Do you know what's your responsibility? Do you know what this means to be a husband? You're going to be a leader. You're going to be a leader, you're going to be a teacher, you're going to be the one that will set yourself an example. Are you willing and prepared to set yourself as a good example for your wife? Did we ever think about this? Or you want to get married at this age? Did you think about this responsibility? That you need to be the maintainer and the supporter of the supporter of this family? Do you have a job? Are you working about getting a job? What the Prophet said, Ya Ma'ashim al Shabab, man is tata'amikum al ba'af al zawaj. Oh young men, those who have the means to get married, those who have the means, we have to understand there is needs. There is need, there is wants involved. It's not because I want to get married. He said those who have the need, they can get married. Those who do not have the need, let them to observe fasting. Let them have some suffer and some patience until Allah gives them this means. You're going to be responsible to maintain not now yourself, now you're responsible about yourself and another person. Now you're responsible about feeding yourself and another person. Now you're responsible about sheltering yourself and another person. And soon, you will be responsible about you. And later, you'll be responsible about family. So are you prepared for this obligation? Or you want to get married and you have nothing? What you gave, going to give here? What you going to give here for a dowry? What you place you going to take care to live? We have to prepare ourselves for this responsibility. We have to study about it. The sister wants to get married. Does she understand what this means to get married? Do you know what's your obligation? Are you prepared to be a follower? Or you want to be a man? Are you prepared to have the patience and the suffer to be a follower? To listen and to obey? Are you prepared to be a mother? <coughs> what do you know? Do you know how to cook? Do you know how to cook? Are you training yourself? Because we live in a society which most people they depend on a fast food, restaurant. But we Muslims, we don't go spend our money on restaurants at our time. Because we try to measure our situation and we try to do the best of what we have. So instead go and spend fifty dollars, me and my wife eating in, in a restaurant, maybe we can do it once every blue moon, like they say. But you could not be doing it like twice a week and three times a week. So instead of two eating for fifty dollars or forty dollars in a restaurant, they can make it for fifteen dollars with some potato and tomatoes, whatever, and they can cook dinner in the house. <coughs> but did this sister who want to get married prepare herself for this responsibility and to take care of her job in the house? Do you know how to cook? Do you study anything about children? How are you going to be a mother? 
So this is what I'm saying. If we're talking about a successful marriage, we have to think about it today. Before even we get involved in marriage, we have to understand that there is responsibility and obligation, and that we have to prepare ourselves. We may be even have some time to go to some courses to learn about certain things to fulfill our, our, our obligation. If it's to act as a mother, or to act as a father, or to act as a wife. It's nothing wrong to go to school to learn about certain things. Or maybe even going in the sisterhood in the medley, if they have sisterhood program to learn about certain things, to prepare, prepare sisters to be wife and to be a mother. So if we're talking about successful marriage, we have to prepare for it. We have to prepare ourselves physically, mentally, emotionally to accept this responsibility and to try to fulfill it. Or 
wedding picture or whatever it is, shouldn't have any kind of picture hanging there. And you are not supposed to have a dog inside your house, except if you have a dog for protection. This is an exception in Islam, okay? You can have it and you should have it out of the house. One of the things, <coughs> excuse me, brings the shaitan, and as Abu Bakr Siddiq said, and now shaitan fi bayti Rasulillah, the voice or the sound or the trumpet of the shaitan in the house of the Prophet when he came and was time for Eid and to play the dog. So Abu Bakr, he said, how come this? This is the trumpet of the shaitan. But the Prophet said to him, leave him Abu Bakr. It's a simple. It's lawful today. Why? Because this today is Eid, it's feast. Alright, today is feast. So leave them alone, they can have this kind of entertainment. And the problem that we have, the biggest shaitan in our house, most Muslims. And even, <coughs> as I said, sometimes we are not satisfied with a simple shaitan, we have to have a multi shaitan. Because a devil box and TV is not enough, so we have to have it with a cable. And even pay money for it. So we can have all the music and all the jazz and all the problems and all the disputes. And believe it or not, one of the main problems is that some of the sisters, they watch a lot of garbage in the TV. And they think about divorce and court family and all kind of careful stuff. And they learn it through these things. They learn from this nonsense. And after this, they find these things coming in their personality, little bit by little bit. See? So, we have to try to have some, if we could not succeed to keep the shaitan out of the house, then we should have some control over this devil box. And does not mean you have to treat her like a kid and spank her hand till her you could not touch it, but admonish her with the good admonishment. Remind her about Allah, about the Messenger of Allah, about the Sunnah, about idol talk, about what we as a Muslim we should be. Try to revive and nourish this good feeling and imagine in her heart, not everything don't. Because yes, and maybe you don't while you're here, but when you go to your work, she stay home. What is going to stop here? Because you are not home. You are not home. So your order maybe would be established in the house while you're there, but when you are not there, she don't care. And how do you going to know? You see, so we have to nourish this iman in their hearts that why you should avoid TV, why you have to avoid this things. What about iman? What Allah loves? What Allah strive? This is something very important that we have to nourish in our wives and children about it all. So, <clears throat> to contribute to a successful marriage, that we have to have the fear of Allah, the establish of the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our houses because this will help a lot about having a Muslim family. One of the things that contributes to destruction in the family and if we avoid it will help inshallah successful marriage. Jealous. Jealous. And sometimes, let's say, even suspicion, not jealousy, okay? Uh, jealousy is the right time, in the right place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote it. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had informed us, okay? And also, jealousy is the wrong time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like it. So a person shouldn't be suspicious over everything. And maybe the sister, you understand, she heard somebody knocking, or she was throwing the trash out of the door, and it happened that the brother was driving through, and he noticed the door is open, right away, right away come to his mind, why the door was open, why understand such and such, and right away he did the phone, he couldn't even wait until he come home to ask him what was going on. We have to avoid suspicion. We 
have to try to avoid suspicion, suspicion because now the shaitan will jump in and we will have a party. Right away, because now we're going to think. And we have to ask God and the prayer in the nice means, not right away to assume things as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us in the Ba'dad Dhamdi is some of the suspicion is what? Is the sin. So jealousy has to be in the right time, the right frame, because it can spoil the marriage. One of the things which will contribute to successful marriage, inshallah, the presence of the husband in the house, as long as there is no any necessity outside the house. Okay. We see that some brothers, they go out for whatever business they do it. Some people, they say, I go uh, for a month. Some people they go and understand for business course or whatever, for whatever period of time. Everybody has his own reason why he's going and for what is he doing. I would say, if we're concerned about building Iman and faith, you need to build the Iman and faith in yourself, you need to build it with your wife, you need to build it with your kids. You need to build it in your own locality. I don't have to go to India and Pakistan and to Morocco and to Egypt to build my Iman. The Prophet وسلم, he did not send his Sahaba someplace else to build their Iman. Because Iman is every day and every moment job. Building Iman, how are you going to build the Iman while you're dealing with your wife? How are you going to build your Iman with supper? You will see a lot of things which disturb you from here and you go to Try to control your anger and build your patience with hair and then try to correct the hair. We don't have to leave the town, we don't have to leave our locality, we don't have to neglect our wives so we can build our iman. The presence of the husband in the house it is very important to fulfill needs and wants and emotional needs for the wife. This is something that's very important. Because your presence in the house, it maybe can be for the wife, it maybe can be for the kids, because she herself has a heavy, big load dealing with the kids. She be looking for the moment that you can be home, that you can re release and relieve some of these burdens that she's dealing with kids. Okay? Need some kind of order in the house. And you know the mother usually needs towards the kids, not like the father. And the kids, they may behave better when the father is there. So the presence of the husband is very important in the house. Also for certain small things, it may be disturbing you. Like I understand the force is very late for a month. And because you're so busy with whatever that you're doing, you don't have time for the house, you don't live in the house as long as much as she lives in the house. So these drops of water and these leaks of water is disturbing her every time she's standing in the kitchen. She's standing in the kitchen hours. This is her place. This is her place. She's day and night there, and you're outside here and there. And it's not bothering you because you come and understand your meal is ready, you eat and But small things in the house need to be done. And you know, women usually is not capable to do this minor fixing and things in the house. She needs a man to do these things. So sometimes we neglect these things because we don't have the time to be in the house. And these small things that maybe seem to you not a big major thing is disturb a woman, disturb a wife. And as a result of these small minor things, it comes a big explosion. Look at the big fire comes of what? Look at the head of match, how small. A match, small. Look at the mountain, it's nothing except small rocks together and pebbles and after this you have a big mountain. So the same thing. This is a small thing that's to build a wife or a woman. The forces is leaking. This pen you understand or this closet door needs to be put back. All this is small things combined together. Your lateness coming late, not being enough in the house, this and that, all these things get together, small, small minor things and after this will bring about problems in the house. So, if a person fulfills his obligation, 
outside towards his work or a school, he go to the mess and make his salah. You should think about your wife as a companion. Not only the brothers in the masjid with the companions. Okay? This is something that we have to understand. It's not always the brothers can be your companions. And you always have time with the brothers in the masjid. This is a big mistake that some of us do it. Why you would not cut some of this time for your wife? She is your companion. She is your partner. She is your friend. She needs somebody that she can talk to. Otherwise, she'd be listening to the TV. She'd be watching TV and listening to music. Because she needs. She needs to talk to somebody or something to entertain her or something to keep her company. So now, it's very important that we make the time to be with our wives. And don't misquote me or misunderstand me. I'm not saying neglect your obligation. But I said that we have time after taking care of our schools or our business or the mass, we should leave some of this time for the house. Not only go home for the dinner, and after this run outside for Salat al Isha, and when you come back again, will be the time to go to sleep. Marriage is not built on sex only. This only part of the marriage. Companionship, spending time, talking about things, discussing certain issues, with your wife is something very important. Good treatment. Good treatment, and when I say about good treatment, is something applied to the brother as well as the sister. And I want to say that there is many verses in Quran which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done and say, وَلَقَدْ قَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored the human being. He did not say, I honor the man. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ قَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمِ Allah has honored the human being and made them the upright. They walk straight. They don't walk in a form like animals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make everything submissive for them from animals and uh, ocean and boats and cars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us Son of Adam is the master of all these created things and everything to be subservient for him. And this includes a man to the decree and the honoring being given to a human being in general, not only for the man. So we have to accept the woman as part of Allah's creation whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored. And also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, لا تدخلوا الجنة حتى تحابوا لا تدخلوا الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحابوا ألا أدلكم على شيء فعتموه تحاباتكم أكشوا السلام The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said You will not enter paradise until you believe And you are not going to believe until you love one another Should I inform you about something if you do it That you will love each other أَفْشُ السَّلَامُ مُمْ تَبْلُكَيْشَنْ أَوْ سَيْلِكَيْشَنْ أَوْ السَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ So, the Prophet ﷺ said, it's part of faith and part of entering paradise, love one another. What's this mean? Does the wife include in this? Or love one another, that means the brothers to love each other and the sisters love each other. And this called brotherhood and this called sisterhood. What's wrong? Why sometimes we understand some verses and some ahadith that this apply only to me with my brothers in the message? None of you will be a believer until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself from the good things. Same thing. So what? Can I love? Can, can I imply this hadith towards my wife? No, she's my wife. So what is it? <laughs> when the Prophet said, You are not entered paradise until you, you, you believe, and you could not believe until you love one another. Is this a lie to you and your wife? Can I love my wife? Can my wife love me? No, 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 brother. This means that we have to be like brotherhood. You see, and be sisterhood. What's going on? Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wal mu'minuna wal and the believers, male and female, are the awliya, the friends, the protectors, 
eh, from one another. Why does God not apply to you and your wife? Eh? So, love, God free, kindness, love, all the things is being encouraged by Islam and will be more encouraged between husband and wife. <coughs> is it from the husband towards the wife or from the wife towards the husband? Both. Both. You see? So, good treatment is very important in Islam. Although, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had laid certain obligation, obligation on the man as well as certain obligation on the woman. But it is very important, starting with the woman, to give her man, her husband, the right and the respect of a leadership. Is the husband, is the imam of the house, you should give him the respect of a leader, of an imam, to give him and to let him feel this. Because if you make him feel that he lower than you, or that he is not uh, qualified to be the person, or he's not worthy of this position, no way he's going to give you the good treatment. Okay? Therefore, they say that a man can own and possess the woman body, but a woman can possess the man heart and mind. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has planned this kind of feeling in us towards women. Okay? But a woman can have more control from the man because all what he you understand, his major things comes feeling this body satisfaction from you. But a woman can have the control more than the body of the man, she can have his heart and his mind. Okay? So it is very important that a woman give this respect to the man to let him feel that he is the leader and he is the husband and he is the imam of the house. And one of the main thing is that she has to be obedient to her husband. In anything, and let me put it clear like this, in anything as long as it's not disobedient of Allah or His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala said in the Quran, Surah number 4, verse number 34, فَالصَّالِحًا قَانِتًا حَافِظَاتٌ لِلْغَيْبِ بِمَا حَفِظَ اللَّهُ and this one thing that we have to focus in it, in the surah, inshallah, in the First, in surah number four, verse number, verse number uh, 19, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena aman, this is a fall from Allah on all the believers. And special demand. Okay, this is directed command to you. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يحل لكم أن ترث النساء كرها ولا تعطوهن لتذهبوا ببعض ما آتيتموهن. Oh, you believe you are forbidden to inherit women against their will. Nor should you treat them with harshness. Okay, love. Consideration. This is a command of Allah. You could not relate with him in this manner. Let's look to verse number 34 when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained about the a good a believing woman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al Rijaru Awamun ala nisa Bima Fadala Allahu Ba'dah Ma'ala Bah wa Bima and Kaku min Amwali. فالصالحات قانتات حافظات للغيب بما حفظ الله. Men are the protectors and the maintainers of women. Or in charge, protectors, it comes after different ways and different 
explanation, inshallah, we talk about it. But Qawwamun is a person, like say, one who stands firm in another, another business, protects his interests, and looks after his affairs, okay, <coughs> from what being in charge. So Allah say, men are in charge of women. They are the head of them, they are the maintainers, they are the one who in charge, they are the imams, they are the leaders, okay? Men are the protectors and maintainers of women because Allah has given them, because Allah has given the one more strength or ranks than the other and because they support them from their needs. Therefore, the righteous women are devoutly obedient and guard in the absence and guard in the husband's absence what Allah would have them to guard. So the description of a righteous woman, that she is salih a person, and how the righteousness will come to a person by doing the command of Allah, by obeying Allah, by obeying the husband in anything he asks you to do it, as long as in your means, and it's not disobedience to Allah. So Allah described a woman who's what first? Saliha. She's a righteous. How should be a righteous? By carrying the command of Allah. And he said, Qani The four righteous women are devoutly obedient. Obedience. Obedience. If you don't have this in the house, forget about the marriage, forget about the family. No way you can have a successful marriage. This is one of the main keys about successful marriage. To woman to be submissive, to be obedient to her husband, as long as he does not command her to do something beyond her means, and as long as he commands her something is not against Quran or against the Hadith. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said? Say that she devotely obedient. And she guards the absence of the husband what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded her to guard. Uh, Inshallah, let's stop here because it's time for the salah. Uh, there is possibility that we may continue the lecture after the salah or maybe we'll be questions and answers in debate on the person who's in charge. Zakumullah khayran and Allah. Inshallah, can you please write it down and we'll have 
had come to this position about a woman during her menses from all these other ideologies and all other religions. And that the Prophet وسلم, allows us to be with our women during the time we have their menses, and he says that if I will share it the camp, that it is permissible to use and to do everything with your wife when she has her menses except intercourse. So, so the Prophet وسلم, said that you can do everything with your wife that we enjoy her company, you can sleep with her, you can kiss her, hug her. He said everything you can do with your wife when she has permission except intercourse. But what I want to bring your attention here is that during the time of menses, the woman, her emotion and her uh, nerves and all her system in a different situation. And this is what we have to take in consideration that she be angry, that anything, she's so more sensitive during this time and therefore if we can try to be more nicer to her during this time, inshallah this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for it and will help you inshallah to have a good and successful marriage. One of the main things inshallah that before we close about the spending. The spending became one of the main things as a problem in the marriage and it can lead and it can be one of the main uh, keys towards successful marriage. Spending from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides to you. And we are not asking anybody to go beyond his means, okay? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you have to do si'atim and si'atim that the person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him to spend according to his means, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking you to go beyond your limit. Uh, so according to what Allah has given you, you should spend and you should provide for it your family. Let's say that even in having that the person has been laid down out of his job or he been injured in his job, he could not have the income that he used to have it before. I think it would be very nice that and there's nothing going to take out of your manhood that you can explain to your wife what's going on, that you ask her to be patient, and even there's nothing wrong if she has means of income, if she wants to spend it in your during this period and you will consider it as a day in your side, you can explain to her. And if she's a good sister and she fear Allah, and inshallah she's not going to care and she says don't worry about it, you understand, because what I'm going to keep my money for or things. But if you try to understand to try to get her, look, you have all this money, and you know that I've been injured in my job, I could not work anymore, you should be doing this and that. She's not going to be willing, she's not going to be thinking about helping you, but the proper approach sometimes will it change how things can be done in the house. So there's nothing wrong, as I said, that you go and explain to your wife what has happened in your job, and that you are not going to be able to take care of this business for the next four weeks and uh, inshallah if you have any way that she can support the family until you can get the money that you pay her back. If she says to do so, alhamdulillah, if she says no, this will be a date or you have to pay it back, it is your responsibility and there is nothing wrong that this can be paid and you have to pay it later on. But it is very important that we always look for means, halal means of supporting the family because supporting the family is obligation for us as brothers and it causes a lot of problems when it's missing out of the family. One of the things to lead to successful marriage is that in the case of dispute in the family, that we should go through the means and the steps which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided in the Quran. And we don't always rush ourselves for divorce. Because sometimes any small thing happens between a brother and his wife, the either thing in this time, al butcher al you are divorced, you are holy, all the things that we should have some sort of and that we have to talk 
the needs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained in the Quran, which inshallah we're going to talk about the divorce tomorrow, so this will be a lecture by itself. But I will remind you, inshallah, before I close, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that means a Muslim shouldn't or a believer shouldn't hate a believer woman. Okay? Because if you describe some attitude of hair, you will find something good in hair. There's no woman that everything is bad in hair. And there's no brother that everything is bad in hair. Okay? So we shouldn't hate each other. Because you understand, say, she has very sharp tongue, she has very bad attitude, she's this, she's that. Okay? Yes, this is true, you may have something you dislike in hair, but this is not supposed to make you hate hair because you always should try to think about what other qualities is good in your wife. Last and not least, or least and not last, always try to put yourself in hair shoes. Yes, you are the head of the family, you are the man, you are the one in charge, but between me and you, and let me whisper in your ear, and make sure that your sister will hear us. Okay? It is very important that sometimes, if you would not always, sometimes you put yourself in your position and think, if you really in your position, what you going to do? And sometimes she comes and says, my father is sick and I have to go to see him. Say, but you see, I told you I am this close and I told you I understand the kids, he needs this and he did not do so and so and so and so and so. And he gave her all this big list that she didn't do. But really try to think, if your father is sick and he's in the intensive care, what you going to do? Okay? Yes, she has to obey you, she has, she has, she has. Okay? But it is very important that before we issue any orders or we say don't or do that we should try to be kind and merciful and think about if I am in her position would I like somebody to tell me do this and that or don't do this and that if we can be considered and think sometimes what I would like to somebody to do to me in such a position and do the same thing for her, inshallah this will be helpful to bring about success in our marriage. Success in marriage is something longer than or bigger than me to talk about it, but this was the little bit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped me to think today and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make me to help you to come about successful marriage inshallah it is today or tomorrow and we leave the rest of the time for questions inshallah okay. i don't yeah, maybe maybe the sisters would like this i don't mind question the question the first question states if a husband gives his wife an infection from a sexual from sexual intercourse, which the doctor says came from another partner, what should he do? He travels with non-Muslims for his job, and he also starts he stops a lot or maybe a lot. They have been married for years and have other similar problems. What is it? Okay, I, I really I didn't hear the question. I could not. The question is, Shama, can you come down, please? Or take them outside, you know, let them play. The question states, if a husband gives his wife an affection from having intimacy or such a course, which the doctor says come from another partner, what should she do? He travels with non-Muslim for his job, he also stopped making salat, and they have been married for several years and have other similar problems. Infection. Infection. I know what's infection, but you give it, yeah? Oh, infection. Infection. Okay, infection. What else? Infection. No, it's 
pronounced it one time. Now, this woman, now we call her that she is an Aiden. Okay? If one minute is come, she's clean. One minute is come, the second, and she's clean. The third one comes and she's clean before he takes her back. Now her Aiden is over and he could not marry her except with a new marriage. If he take her before this period, during the period of Ida, he can take her back. Alright? Now if he take her back, this will count one divorce. Alright? A man could not divorce his wife while she's during Ida. You can divorce her one time. Okay? Now if he take her back, sleep with her, and something happens again, and you say to her, you are divorced, even if in the same month, this will be the second time. But it has to be again after a clean period of the menses and before you sleep with her. So if you do it like this for the third time, will be a final divorce, and you could not marry her again until she remarried to somebody else. This is Vera Brother Muhammad. You stated in a lecture last night that a man can show his disapproval to his wife's behavior by not speaking to her. I am allowed to. Am I allowed to do the same? For example, he does not keep up the maintenance of the home. In other words, paying the rent, electric, etc. These conditions are very tiring when the man fluctuates, it goes up and down. And he has to go for a better job <clears throat> or his interests a part of his, or he invests a part of his money to make more from his payroll, which he only earns one third of what is needed for the maintenance in one month. He is a kind and loving brother who really tries. He just doesn't manage well and I have and I have tired I have tried to manage the money but he doesn't give me all of this when he, he earns it. I feel this test and trial is something I feel oppressed. Which of these is from Allah and which of these are from Shaykhan is respond. I don't know if you can boycott me. But I don't think also this would be the proper way. I think the brother needs consultation. That you, instead of going carrying him, you need to talk to him. You need to consult him. Maybe the brother is not aware about the problem. Maybe sometimes he's not going to hear it from you. Try to find a closer brother in the community that can relate to him, that can listen to him, that he admire him or respect him, and ask this brother to talk to him. If the brother is not willing after this was you, it's up to you to remain with him or to see divorce or fulfillment. It will be your option, it will be your choice to remain with him or to separate yourself from him. So I think the best thing is that you go for family consultation. If you already had tried to talk to you to him yourself and they didn't help, try to find somebody else who may talk to him. If they didn't change, now it's up to you to remain in this condition or to leave it and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change your condition to be better inshallah. The next question states, I am intended to marry a Muslim sister and when my son's mother, who is not a Muslim, found out she told me that she wanted to learn about Islam because she don't want me to marry this sister, what should I do? <laughs> I'm intending to marry a Muslim sister. And when my son's mother, who is not a Muslim, found out, she told me that she wanted to learn more about Islam because she did not want me to marry this sister. What should I do?
have a son from here. He doesn't stay in this place. Okay. He said he didn't have a son. Okay. He, used, he have a, a lady knows before. Yes. Okay. And now he was planning to marry a Muslim sister. Right. So when this lady got to know about it, she said, okay, now I want to know about this thing. Right. Okay, and after this? Because she don't like the sister. Yeah, that's what the question is. Okay, because she don't like the sister. Yes. All right. She don't want him she to marry the sister. Okay. He don't, she don't want him to marry the sister. Yeah. Right. And after this? Yeah. What should he do? What should he do? What he should do? Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Okay? The only thing that he, before the marriage, if somebody wants to get married to you, he will meet him, discuss with him the affair of the marriage, try to see if he's a good brother, fear or not. Or not. This is the whole thing. What is the procedure should a man follow in taking a second wife and how and when should this be present to the first wife? And the second question which goes along with it, uh, the particular person said, can you, inshallah, briefly address the sickness in the Muslim, for the Muslims of this country towards poor marriage to perhaps remove some of the negative feelings that exist in so many cases? Just to give a whole uh, lecture about poor marriage, but if we're talking about malignant cities, need another lecture by itself, which I think we're going to talk about tomorrow. But the only condition, the only condition stated by Islam, by the Book of Allah and the Son of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is act justice. Allah said, "If you feel, if you feel injustice." So stay with one. So a person who think and feel that he would not be just as four wives, we say to him you have to remain with three. A person who could not be just among three, we say to him that he stay only with two. A person who could not be fair and just between two, we tell him that he have to stick with one. A person who could not be fair with one wife, we tell him get a right hand with this, if there is a right hand with this, or learn and discipline yourself to be fair before you get married. So the only condition that is stated by Allah and Islam is that Allah said, فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُ If you fear injustice that you could not be equal between your wife, so stick with one. Next question. What happens when a couple gets married? and his wife decides to become a Muslim and the brother decides not to become a Muslim. If two couples became interested in Islam and after this the sister decided to accept Islam and her husband decided to remain Christian or a Jew or whatever, immediately after the sister takes her shahada, she has to stay out of this house could not be living in this house because this man is not your husband anymore. And he has no choice except to be a Muslim or take a walk. Okay? And since both of you are interested in Islam and you already know what this Islam is about, you decide to be a Muslim and he don't want to have anything with Islam. This is a choice. It's a choice, so now we choose the donor or we choose the cooker. And you choose Islam, Alhamdulillah, you got the right choice, and this means separation between both of you. Later on, if you become a Muslim, you can get together, but if you continue to be in whatever belief you in, you could not remain with him, and you have to stay out of this marriage. As far as marrying a sister with religion, as you, as far as marrying a sister, uh, with religion, do you mean Islam only, Christianity, or Judaism? Or Jewish. Islam only, and not Islam that means she says Shahada and this is her behavior, her Islamic discipline. This is what I'm talking about. So, we're talking about a good Muslim woman. May Allah give you all, inshallah. Please clarify, since Allah says, do not take from your friends non believers. Then why do brothers think that they can marry non believing women, Christians who believe in the Trinity, are non believers? Please define non believers. And if they do marry these women, are they the, Okay. This yeah, I understand. So why are you using this? Is this going to speak up? Oh, is this? Okay. Uh, you misunderstood the verse, which is like the Tabaloo, that not to take the non believers awliya. Awliya does not mean friends. Awliya is more than friends. A protect, uh, helpers and protectors in the wars. Okay? Those, what you call awliya. 
So it's nothing wrong that you be kind and be nice to the Christian and the Jew as long as he did not transgress against you, as long as he did not fight you, the cause of religion, he did not assist somebody who fighting against you. So this was a misunderstanding about the work of Uniyah as a prince, but Allah said don't take the Christian and the as protectors in the world that means if you have a war with your enemies, don't have supporters or somebody in your, in your armies from those people, okay? But Allah make it lawful for us to marry the people of the world. The shin and hair of the babies, far or do you, uh, or those who have to do it? Please explain. I would not say is a far, but is a practice of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is his sunnah. And you would not find anything better than the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Also, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam informed us to remove his hair, and usually it's an order in the statement of the Prophet or the statement of Allah for, or to make something obligatory. Unless we have something other statement to let us know that it's not obligatory. But it is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu as a practice and he did it himself for his bad sons and we should follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When it is time for salat and the husband is reminded but doesn't want to make it then. But the sister wants to make it one time. Can she make it? Can she make this a lot? Let's say, as example, Zohar comes at one o'clock. The sister wants to make her salah ten minutes afterward. And the brother telling her, no way, we want to make salah together. When are you going to make when I finish this? How long will it take you? Or it take me about an hour to finish. I would say to the sister, you should wait for your husband. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you and give you two, three hours between Zohar and us. Why you have to bring about dispute and dissension in the, If you concern about getting the sunnah or the reward, you get more reward by obeying your husband. And this is not disobeying Allah or the victim in prayer. So there is a room and you can wait, inshallah, and make salah with your husband. Let him feel he is the imam. And next one, Steve. When your husband has you doing what you When your husband has you doing very little thing, example, bringing the uh, remote control, <laughs> the different controls, yeah, the remote control, <laughs> bring me the phone, bring me a cup of soda, etc. Will I be disobedient if I choose not to do simply because I'm tired or have other chores and he is not doing anything? When your husband tell you pick me the devil control, which is not controlled, tell him yes, sir. <laughs> you see, we make big things out of nothing. Do you know how much? What about the same thing if you ask him, I need a dollar and I send the my garbage bags. We need five dollars to, to, to take the clothes to the laundry. And we need ten dollars and I send to cook the dinner. And we need, and we need, and we need, and we need, and we need. So what? He go and work hard and spend so he can have this position. And if you start to understand, jumping for everything that he's telling you to do it, he will, inshallah, soon or later, he will be embarrassed from himself and he start to help himself a little bit. You know, but maybe he exhausts, maybe he works very hard. Maybe he's tired, maybe he also feels that he, he needs to be spoiled sometimes. Everybody against him outside. The boss, the job, everything. So he needs somebody to give him a break. Would you be the one to give him the break or you want to break his back? So it's not a big thing. Give him the solar, give him the other sense of the give him all the things. And if you feel it really is too much for you, you can do it entirely. Come on, you can do it. It's a good exercise for you. Come on, you need, you need to move a little bit in a nice way that he may be start doing for himself. Uh, the next question is, we know uh, the 
mean another hadith that speaks about if your husband calls you to the bed and you don't respond and the curse of Allah is on you. What if the Muslim is sick? Should he have some type of compassion for her and wait until she's feeling a little bit better and then, you know, uh, call her to the bed so they can... Uh, uh, so I think we need to put a stop sign for questions, yeah. but yeah. for some reason I don't know why I'm so much. I usually to go, but uh, I'm little bit getting tired and you can see me rubbing my eyes. Uh, Ramadan, by the way, I would like to advise you that anytime you come to Philadelphia, you don't stay in Ramadan. Anymore. <laughs> Brothers, they have, I, and I hope the sister or the brother of the special not to feel bad about that I'm trying to make, uh, but I'm only advising my Muslim brothers and sisters. They have, uh, they call it generators there. Came to me up until almost 3 o'clock this morning. 3 o'clock this morning. Over my head. And I could not see, and it was too noisy. So I was, until 3 o'clock, and after this, you know, I came here for, I stayed for about an hour and a half and came here. And after the Fajr lecture, I went to sleep again. I had a put in a, and after this, a brother called me, somebody told him the shit and he killed me. So he said, what shit? He said, Muhammad said, I said, I know this man, I don't know. And he took his phone, my phone number, and he called me, he woke me up. And he was so happy that he got in touch with me. I was so happy to get from him, but I could not go to sleep after <laughs> I'm exhausted, excuse me. So, inshallah, if we can uh, hold this question for, uh, for maybe a little bit enough for me. <laughs> but what was the question? Uh, so, yes, you remember just I was talking about successful marriage and I said you should take consideration the way how you treat your wife, especially during time of misses, okay? Because your emotion, your environment, is, is, is a time of sickness and illness, okay? And this is true, yes, that you should have some kind of a feeling and compassion and mercy towards our wives. It's not because you're the man, Allah gives you the right that she has to jump, you understand, and stand in her thoughts for anything that you say. You have to consider sometimes her feeling, what she's going through, she's pregnant, is she can you understand how all the nightmares in the child? You have to understand, my dear respected brothers, that sister she goes through a lot of things which sometimes we could not deal with it. So if she's sick, she's pregnant, she they have her uh, menses, all the things we should take it in consideration and uh, try to be patient. Not only that she has to be obedient, but we as brothers also we have to learn how to be patient in Sharma. How many questions? No, I'll just stop, you know. How many questions? Can we read them out? What time is that? Uh, six thirty. Six thirty. Some of them like we I was supposed to eat yeah. today. Yeah, you go come back. Yeah. Okay, then for those, I'm not saying that you need to come back, but those who want their questions to be answered, I don't mind to come back. But uh, I'm sorry to say this, I think I need some unlimited uh, in my day, so if you don't mind, excuse me. <laughs> or maybe we have some premium this time, you never know. So inshallah, if I can go get some ta'ab, and if you want to get back, we can try to finish this question, inshallah. If not, we we'll meet tomorrow, inshallah, in New Jersey or East Orange, uh, New Jersey, inshallah. Zatullah khair, subhanAllah.
question that our brother gave us at the marriage to Iman uh, as I said, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Quran, that they could not get married. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to pay for a female Muslim to be under the authority or the position of non-Muslim, even if this non-Muslim from the people of the book is found. And for those people who claim that this is correct, they have to produce their evidence. The next question is, why can't we get married by the law of the land? Do you think it will protect the sister from so much divorce that happened in Islam? If this is the only means which left for the Muslims and the only choice that left for the Muslims to protect the sisters from divorce, I don't think that we should allow this because the religious brother that if you know that he's not going to fear Allah, you shouldn't give him the sister from day one. Uh, marriage by the state is not going to prevent the divorce. Marriage by the state maybe give it will give you more hassle and more hardship going through the process of the divorce, but he still he will go with it. Or maybe he even he will move to another state and go and marry somebody else. So, and all what it takes to understand is putting a lawyer and paying him some money for him to initiate the divorce. It's all what it takes. So, this thing is not going to solve the problem. And we should try to teach the brothers and sisters how to act as Muslims and how to behave as Muslims and how to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a sister has been in Ijda two times, does this mean that after the third Ijda, she must divorce her husband and marry someone else, even if none of the Ijda results in divorce? Do you think it's not a pair? Ijda pair causes divorce. What is this? He takes her back each time he knows the divorce. Okay. So she's saying, and if, it's, uh, if he does this two times, mm -hmm. and the third time, uh, she must have, should she have to divorce her husband? Even if it's, you know. Okay. If he divorces her two times, and he takes care of that, that means he, he still has one more talk, one more divorce. If he divorces her for the third time, now both of them have to be separated after this divorce. They could not be together. This is what she is. Next question is, what is the sister supposed to do as she wants to get married? And her father, when it went on her, he asks all for this. And when it went on goes, it's like, this uh, please, what does she do if she wants to get married and can't? My understanding is that this sister, she wants to get married and her father will take care of her subject to marry this person and she won't get married. Uh, we have to ask why did the father refuse this person? If for Islamic reason, we have to support him in his case. If it's not for Islamic reason, she can take her case to the wali or the khalifa or the judge, uh, the Muslim judge, or to the imam of the community. And for him, if the father continues to refuse, he can add in the position of a guardian and marry him. If a sister has agreed to forfeit maintenance when she marries, can she later ask for her rights to maintenance and if her husband refuses, does she have the right to end the marriage? If she forgot her rights of maintenance, 
because she is the one who voluntarily can claim this project. So she could not go and change it later on. If she doesn't want to remain in this condition, she has the right to get out of this marriage. She can seek honor or he can divorce her. But still, this would be taking her power and her side to forego her right and after this later on come and ask for her right. What is the proper etiquette for a wife who has left her husband and does not reside in this house or live in this house during the period of his death? What are his rights over her? And since she has decided not to live in his house, his home, and has waived his rights to maintenance during the end of time. What is the proper etiquette for a wife who has left her husband and does not reside in his home? She left her husband. Yes. During the period of his death. What are his rights over her? If since she has decided not to live in his home and has waived or have uh, uh, waived his rights to maintenance during her in that period. Uh, it's a little bit complicated for me, but uh, my understanding is the sister of the young girl, Aida, she had left the house, which is wrong. And after this, she's saying what is her rights. She could not have any rights until she gave back to her husband's hands, even if she's doing anything. She deserves support and maintenance and all those things, as long as she is in her husband's house. If she refuses the house, so she loses her rights. The next question is, my husband is a good husband and father in general. I fear staying with in this type of marriage. It is polygamy or poor marriage. I had a hard time being pleasing to a law. I fluctuate between happy and depressed. I am tired of being in this position. Should I divorce him and seek another marriage? My understanding from your question is that your husband has been a good husband to you and a good father. And the problem is that because he got another wife and you could not help your feelings. Inshallah, Allah advise you that you be patient and that you make a lot of salah, pray to hijack you in the night, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help your condition, keep the remembrance of Allah. Value with the remembrance of Allah, value with the remembrance of Allah, hearts will win satisfaction. So do your best and try to stay with the situation, try to remain in it. If you found that you really could not stay in it, and if you want to see color or divorce, you can do so. But you should first try hard to the best of your ability, inshallah. What is the meaning of what your right hand possesses? Right hand is this, <coughs> which a man can buy them or can inherit them. How do we get to have right hand is this? If it happened to be a war, and the Catholic country. And the Muslim country, they win the battle. So whatever women, they capture them in the battlefield, they call them right hand disease. The Muslim governor will have the right to do the 